oftentimes when we talk about data in the enterprise, people think about like uh, context data. So all of the maybe documents or information that enterprise have stored, but there's a very big second amount of data, um, which is typically the data that's stored in people's heads in enterprise, which is oftentimes the most valuable type of data. I'm Clemens Fienickel. I lead product for the ScaleGen AI platform in the enterprise team here at Scale. And today I'm joined by my colleagues, Ben and Sam. Uh, ben, want to introduce yourself? Yeah, hi, I'm Ben Sharpstein. I lead product for our enterprise solutions at Scale. Uh, Sam? Hey everyone, um, I'm Sam. I'm the head of the enterprise ML team here at Scale. Great, so today we're going to talk about data, enterprise data, specifically, I think like uh, we're going to talk about a specific type of data. Oftentimes when we talk about data in the enterprise, uh, people think about like uh, context data. So all of the maybe documents or information that enterprise have stored, but there's a very big amount of, uh, very big second amount of data, um, which is typically the data that's stored in people's heads in enterprise, which is oftentimes the most valuable type of data. To kick us off, Ben, uh, why don't you dive a bit deeper there and tell us about kind of like um, how we're thinking about like enterprise data and specifically that one that is like locked inside of like um, experts' heads. Yeah, totally. Clemens, as you said, um, really two types of data in the enterprise. You have this context data and you can think of that as the type of data that someone would need that they would look at on the screen in order to do their job. But that's just uh, a small subset of what really makes an enterprise work and the data that actually makes an enterprise valuable. And like you said, we really think of this as uh, the institutional knowledge in the enterprise that's locked inside the head of subject matter experts. Um, most employees at a company can't just do their job at 100% on day one, even if they have years of experience in an industry. There's a lot of institutional knowledge that comes from actually learning on the job, having experience, kind of having history of, of performing the tasks. It takes a lot of time looking at contracts law, understanding how you actually work with your customers, the nuance of all these things, and then you know putting that into practice and kind of serving your customers. And when we're thinking about training agents, it's really important to unlock this latent data, right? The, the stuff that you observe while doing the job, but isn't actually necessarily written down somewhere, right? It's the, it's the type of stuff that you need to apprentice uh, in order to learn. Um, and the reason why this is so important as we're thinking about the next gen of agents is that I really think that when we are really interrogating, like, what do we want agents to do? It's not just to do the things that software does today. We're actually trying to get agents to do the things that humans do today, right? Whether that's through augmenting them and giving them co-pilots or through, you know, potentially long-term replacing at least aspects of what they do today. How would you think this kind of like data, like, contrast to to that to kind of like what the, the model is already trained on yeah i think that's a that's a great question and something that we think about a lot on the enterprise team you know in general the models are really trained on all of the public data that's available and if you just take public data you're going to get the average of what everyone thinks um, but we also know that companies have advantages Right? Companies have things like process power, they have institutional knowledge. And so I think that's like one of the biggest differences. But what really makes it special for enterprises is that that data is specific to them. And that is their advantage in many ways. We need to capture it and turn it into AI ready or agent ready data, and then leverage it for those companies to make agents that are specific to them, their process and uh, their expertise. How do you think about like the difference between um, sort of agent assistance versus agents to, to full autonomy? Uh, I think that's something that we've come across a lot sort of in our different projects and clients is uh, there's a little bit of a demand for both. And maybe we're sort of reaching a point where they will be the same thing. But for now, it seems somewhat separated. And I'm curious, like how you think about the data that's captured in both. Yeah, I think that the you know, you can kind of think about the levels of autonomy similar to how you might think about the levels of self-driving, right? So in, in self-driving, first we were like, okay, can we do cruise control? And then maybe we got to lane assist. Uh, and then we got to auto following a car. And that's, I think, kind of where we are now in the levels of agents. 
And what we're really trying to get to is this full autonomy. But in order to get there, you really need to have a human in the loop in order to build these kind of co-pilots that allow you to kind of capture this data. But we, uh, we don't just kind of jump to full autonomy, right? Because this data is not just necessarily out there in the world, it's, it's not easy necessarily to model reward models in such a clear way upfront. And so we need to actually observe what the humans do in order to get there. And I think to your point around the difference between what a fully autonomous data set looks like and what an augmented data set looks like is partly in the goal, right? When you're augmenting a human decision, you're not necessarily trying to make the decision, but you're trying to capture the data that's relevant to make the decision, which then will kind of move to further levels of autonomy and agent data um, to, to actually make that decision. But we kind of have to build up this pyramid over time. And it's difficult, I think, in a lot of, uh, a lot of times to really just like kind of jump to the end, both because the, you know, human uh, computer interaction may not be ready, the industry may not be ready, the company may not be ready. There's a lot of um, kind of process that goes on. Uh, there's a lot of change management, but also because uh, there are times when we really do want humans in the loop. Uh, and, you know, it is really important for humans to make that, make the final decision. But if we can capture that agent data to help augment the decisions, that's, that's really valuable for the company. Yeah, it's a, it's a great point. I think like, as we continue down this path towards assistance to autonomy, like it's really important that we continue to sort of leverage our, our data capture and, and agent data protocol, uh, within SGP to set us up, set ourselves up, uh, for success, not just now, but in the future as well. Yeah, totally. And I think this kind of agent data capture, it's also not just about what people uh, necessarily are doing at the company, but it's also how their customers are interacting. It's about how agents interact and how humans interact. And really it's kind of, um, the lines are kind of blurring over time and, and having a very expressive way to capture actions that either human agents or AI agents take is really kind of core to what we're doing at scale. Clemens, do you want to walk us through how we're doing this for our enterprise customers inside of the solutions that we're building for them? Yeah, definitely. So I think that, yeah, so we've talked a lot about kind of like how important it is to uh, capture the, the data that's inside of like the, the heads of the experts. And that is really like that data capture principle or like the, the agent monitoring protocol is really at the center of like how we build our product. Um, SGP around that kind of cycle. So we roughly um, understand the, a process in kind of like a four step, in a four step kind of like process. Um, so the first one is implementing um, an initial version of the agent, then integrating it directly into the workflow of a subject matter expert, like for example, um, a lawyer or like um, a um, person working out in a life science company. Um, then we capture the human feedback and the interactions that run through uh, this agent. And then lastly, we kind of like take that data and actually like train the agent, like using that human feedback and that interaction data. So that's kind of like the four-step process, implement, integrate it, uh, capture the feedback and then train, train with that data. What's beautiful about this, this workflow is like it really optimizes on the one hand for speed. Um, so we've got like built all of the instrumentation and tooling to do this as fast as possible to get to the first version. Um, and then when we say we integrate it into the experts workflow, that's really crucial um, because we really don't want to kind of like add extra work for the subject matter expert. And we don't want them to need to kind of like do um, data work, like creating um, training data themselves or doing evaluation that are outside of their core job by themselves. Instead, we want them to, in quotation marks, always just do their job. So the lawyer just, Kind of like instead of doing the extraction manually themselves, they get like a first draft by the AI and kind of like just have to correct it. So like it's, they're already getting value at and like just doing the regular workflow or like job in that sense. And that is the exact kind of like um, data that we need to capture and harness in order to like make the agent better. Um, and then because it's kind of like a cycle, it also kind of like improves over time um, in the sense that like the more the agents are being used, the more data we produce and the better we can, can make the agents as they go along. And this kind of like is this adaptive uh, learning system that like we really believe very strongly on in at scale as like we capture that data to have the agents get better as they're being used, as they're being used. Sam, I think you can talk through maybe how that encoding works and kind of the various different techniques that we use there. Yeah, for sure. 
Um, so I think in terms of like how we think about where this agent data can come in and how, you know, this codified latent knowledge of the SME can be used from an ML standpoint, it's really about two separate sort of levers that we have. One is sort of like taking that information and actually influencing the way that these LLMs generate like themselves, right? Um, and then the second is really like the context and the plumbing around what makes the LLM useful. So Clemens, you talked about sort of like these agent configurations. We talk a little bit around um, sort of like retrieval functions and different things that tools that you have available. So that's kind of like the second lever that I'm talking about. And then the first is really the LLMs themselves. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about sort of how we take both of this, the data from uh, these SMEs and influence both of these two pieces. Um, so when it comes to, to model capabilities, I like to think about this space as sort of like a massive domain adaptation space, right? Um, as we've talked about, the data that is sort of used to train these LLMs is quite different from the enterprise SME uh, knowledge space, right? Uh, and so our job is really just to help push these, these models into the domain that is most helpful to these enterprise SMEs. Uh, and this comes in a lot of different forms. And so what we want to do is basically take this, this data that we capture with SGP uh, and use it within the LLM generation. So this can come in a lot of different forms. So this kind of helps the agent and the, the LLM understand how these assistants are really the most helpful for these SMEs. Um, and then uh, this can also sort of be expanded, right? So what we do often is we'll sort of look at these traces that SGP captures and we'll find conversations that are really important sort of domain seeds, right? Like the type of conversations that SMEs like to have uh, around with these assistants. Um, and we'll take these sort of like domain seeds or these, these typical questions, and we'll use them to actually scale up a really large data set synthetically potentially um, to, to essentially learn the different types of conversations that we want these, these agents and these LLMs to have. Um, and these synthetic conversations, we can use things sort of like verifiable rewards or checks to make sure that they're within certain parameters to have a really large data set of really high quality example conversations, right? Um, and then sort of once we have the synthetic data set, there's a lot of different things we can do with it, right? We can sort of fine tune the LLMs, do some kind of like model teacher distillation techniques. Um, and then again, we can also use them as sort of knowledge that the agent can pull from at runtime, sort of in a, in a knowledge base or something like that. Um, and then the last point I'll talk about on sort of like the LLM adaptation um, is some of the work that we've been doing recently around verifiable rewards. Um, what we believe is that sort of in the enterprise setting, a lot of these problems can be codified as sort of verifiable rewards. And the traces that SGP captures allow us to sort of compare against things that we can then verify. Um, I think like one, one thing that I'm like super excited about, like when um, Sam, thanks for explaining this like in great detail, is that like when we talk about this with customers, is that like maybe like two years ago, a lot of the enterprises thought that they can just like train like models on all of the data that they have sitting in their data warehouse. And like the reality is, of course, like that type of like um, data is not really what you can directly train on. So what we then told them often like, of like, oh, you would actually like what people thought is like they would need to translate now all of the data that they have stored somewhere into like training data and like that sounds horrible to enterprises so like suddenly they need all of the experts to actually do a ton of data work and like that's kind of like a non-starter so like maybe ben you could talk a little bit about kind of like yeah what, what we kind of like seeing with enterprises like how they get really excited when we tell them like oh we can we actually have like developed a way to like essentially um like passively capture uh, that data kind of like from your experts. Um, so you actually don't have to do any of this like manual data generation. Yeah, absolutely. I think this is the, the promise that we've all been, or kind of the product that we've all been waiting for, which is the promise of machine learning for the past decade has been the more you use it, the better it gets. And for LLMs, that actually kind of hasn't been the case. Uh, it's really been improvements in foundation models that have made improvements in the effectiveness of agents. And I think for the first time, we're gonna really be able to see that we're gonna be able to super specialize for different enterprise uh, applications by using the subject matter expert data and this kind of capturing this data and bringing it back into agents. And I would say maybe a year, year and a half ago, everyone thought reinforcement learning or fine tuning, or specifically fine tuning was gonna be the way that people were gonna customize agents for the enterprise. And what we actually saw was that 
you know, basically giving few shot examples or in context learning was more effective. And I think the way to think about this is actually quite intuitive for how you might train uh, someone new at their job, which is, you know, you're in your first three months of a job and you have a hard problem. You would go to your boss and basically say, can you give me examples of maybe how we've handled this problem in the past? And they would give you some examples and you would kind of copy those examples and maybe try to adapt them to the new problem that you're facing. But over the course of your career, maybe the next five years, you actually would kind of like learn the, the generational stuff that is, is really leading to making those decisions. Instead of, so instead of learning by copying, you're kind of learning through intuition and experience. And I think that's actually what we're getting to. And this you know, comes through fine tuning, it comes through reinforcement learning with verifiable rewards, but actually in the same way that, you know, when you do a good job at work and your, cu your, your, your customer, your client or your user says that was really good, then you get a positive feedback loop. That's also kind of what we're doing with these agents. And it's just taken us time to build up the infrastructure to really build these applications in a way that we can develop uh, kind of co-pilots to start to go through these different layers of autonomy to capture this data in the right format. Uh, we've built SGP really specifically around not just delivering an agent, but building an adaptive learning agent that gets better over time. And that's really what we've been spending our time and we're really starting to see it uh, kind of play, play out and really provide a lot of benefits to our customers. And they're seeing it through better agents, right? So it's table stakes that you can build an AI application that can do a workflow. But now if you wanna to get to the level of quality that really most companies will expect, you really need to have that agent improve over time, learn from your subject matter experts and really codify the expertise of your enterprise. Yeah, I think like a big um, item of course is also kind of like yeah, how these um, agents kind of like use kind of like all of the kind of like other software that's available today for um, like for the enterprise. So enterprise of course use like hundreds of like different pieces of software and APIs and like legacy systems. So um, like a big topic is of course like kind of like how um, these agents use use tools in their in their day to day and kind of like how how do tools kind of like play into this kind of like data capture dynamic and like why kind of like why is it maybe like just another like example of like why this kind of like um, implicit data capture is like so powerful, Sam? Yeah. Um, I think it's really important to to acknowledge that, you know, in order for agents to be really effective, tools have to be a first class citizen and they have to be something that we're constantly thinking about and constantly integrating in, in as, as easy a way as possible. Uh, and SGP, we spent a lot of time thinking about how do tools integrate into these agents that we're building with SGP. Uh, and I think we're sort of starting to reap the rewards of that now. Uh, in particular, I also want to call out that like this, this training paradigm that we have also makes tools a first class citizen, right? So we can look at these traces, we can see some examples of how tools were called, and then we can actually learn from those tool calls directly and have tools sort of called during, during rollouts for reinforcement learning algorithms. Uh, and this is a massive unblock for making agents actually useful in the enterprise space. Uh, and again, all of it comes down to sort of having the traces and the rewards that we want to have from SGP, from these examples, and then essentially using tools, not just during inference, but during RL rollouts, during training, so that we can actually teach these smaller models. How do you effectively use tools? How do you choose between tools? Uh, and that's the stuff that I think I'm most excited about for us in this space. Yeah, super exciting. Yeah, with the tool calls kind of like being directly in these interaction traces, like that is kind of like how we kind of like implicitly can include them in the training, which is like, yeah, super exciting. Um, okay, I think that's all for today's discussion about like agent ready data and like capturing all of that hidden knowledge in inside the heads of like subject matter experts um, to really unlock um, higher performing agents for the enterprise and augment these experts with AI. I think next week we are going to dive deeper into the future of agents kind of like, which of course like uh, is a very rapidly evolving field and uh, yeah, how we're thinking about that at scale as well. So if you don't want to miss it, make sure to subscribe.